Okay, I'm going to do um, a, a remake of my first um, Celtic design tutorial video because I think the quality of the uh, filming is a bit poor considering I did it a while ago. I'm not going to do the others, the other 21 of them, um, but I'll just do this one because it's so important. If you can do this method you can do Celtic crosses, all sorts of Celtic decoration. So <clears throat> it's very easy. We start off with um, a grid which will be two units by three units. I'm doing it freehand. You can do it with a ruler if you like. It takes you a lot, lot longer to do it with drawing instruments. So here's my grid. Okay, um, the first thing to do is to put some circles on the intersections of where, where the line, lines um, cross each other. Circles on the intersections, roughly the same size. Not too small, that's important. Not too small. So there I've put um, <coughs> circles on the intersections. Now I'm going to put circles in the centers of each of the squares, like this. Okay, I'm doing it in pencil, I'm doing it fairly strongly so you can see it on the video, but you must do it um, lighter because you're going to rub it out afterwards, this is just construction. So that is my grid. Now what I want you to look at is the way four circles form a sort of basic diamond shape. There's seven of them on this grid. Okay, look at those. So th this is what you're looking for. This. And what you're going to do is you're going to put two parallel lines making tangents on the insides. So we're doing that, making tangents. I'm not joining from the centers. Please don't join the centers, it won't work. Tangents on the insides between the two. So I'm going to start anywhere and the best place is on this one is probably in the middle. I'm going to make two parallel lines like that. They must come out to the edge of the circle. Just there, see? Now, what I'm going to do is to make a T-junction with the first one. So I'm going to put another parallel pair in here. Could have been there, could have been there, could have been there. But I'm going to put it in there. Parallel pair in like that. Make sure that these join up solidly. Okay, I'm going to put another parallel pair in here. So every pair that I put in is making a T junction with a pair that's already there. So here's another pair going in here and another pair going in here like this. See I'm just going to join that up. That's very important because you want it to, this is the strand. Um, so these are two edges of a strand. So you will always have two two edges. So you want it to appear as though it's going under. So make nice tight junctions. So I'm going to put a pair in here. Okay, and then a pair in here. Now, that is all the pairs that I can do on this particular grid. Alright, don't be tempted to put one in here. Whenever I'm teaching it, there's always somebody that put, wants to put one in there or in there. Um, you can't do it. It must always be a pair of lines never a single line okay 
So now let's think about the sides. Right, this is a strand and it's going to go around there to become that strand. So all we do is we wind it around that circle to aim towards there. And then the outer one will go round towards there. Try and keep them parallel, that's very important. Um, you don't want a discrepancy in the width. So here again, that's going through to there. And then this one is going through to there. So that's the two sides taken care of. Now we have the four corners. So let's just go round like that. The, th the strand is going round, isn't it? Like that. So I'm just going to take this into the corner to make a nice sharp pointed corner. You can do round corners if you want to, but I'm going to do a nice, nice sharp pointed corners. That's a bit wide at the bottom because I did the grid freehand. Oops. Okay, just taking it into the corner. So you get a little gothic, gothic point there. But as I said, if you want to do it round, that's fine. Um, so there's the fourth one. Oops. So that's that's your basic, um, basic knot. That's called a Josephine knot. And you can extend this by, by changing the grid. You can extend it to make it into a border pattern. You can cross it to make uh, uh, a Celtic cross. Uh, there's lots of things you can do with this. Now, have a look at my other videos. You'll see how to do border patterns, Celtic crosses, and other things called break lines, which deflect the pattern um, and techniques of shading and stuff like that. So there's plenty more videos to, um, to have a look at. Uh, if if you're interested in this sort of thing, I've also got a whole playlist on um, uh, what I call space filling, free freehand space filling patterns, which you might find interesting if you like this sort of thing too. So um, Celtic um, Celtic design. I don't think you'll find this. I've never seen this particular technique in in a book, but I'm assured that this is uh, the, a technique that was originally used by the the cells. So um, enjoy it and uh, I'll see you in, in the next video. Bye bye.